It is Sunday in the NFL. My five best bets are on the way, including a two-unit play on one player. Before we dive into that, what's going on? My name is Austin from Calling Our Shot. Can't even do a recap of how we did on Saturday because I'm posting this video before those that game goes down between the Lions and Cowboys. However, we got five picks for Sunday, the final day of 2023. Let's hopefully ring in the new year with a dominant slate. And I got nothing else to promote, guys. We should have our Sunday parlays video posted early on Sunday morning, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Let's dive into the picks, though, today. We're going to start with the first one. Technically, the last pick, the last game on the slate. Hopefully, uh, the final bet we have cashed this season will hopefully be this one because it's Jordan Love in the Green Bay Packers versus Vikings game. I'm taking this over. 33 and a half passing attempts, minus 105 on DraftKings. If the line goes to 34 and a half, you can take it there, although I don't really see it going up, but it could. And we've seen, you know, Jordan Love has been really good this season. Honestly, a lot of Packers fans and really just NFL fans in general didn't expect him to play pretty well, and he has done really well, kind of surpassing a lot of expectations for him. But the Packers didn't have great expectations for him because in the first six weeks of the season, they kind of held him back. Love was under this 33 and a half pass attempts in four of the first six games. However, since then, over this line in six of nine, and that includes a 41 pass attempt game against the Minnesota Vikings, who we once again will face this uh, Sunday night. Now, Look at Minnesota. What they're great at? Stopping the run, forcing teams to pass this season. Seventh most passing attempts allowed in the NFL at 36 per game. You saw last week when Jordan Love did go under this line, he had 28 pass attempts. That was against the Panthers, a team that allowed the fewest pass attempts in the league. And the books saw that. They saw him go under. They raised his line. They know that Jordan Love is probably going to have to pass on Sunday. And we saw against that Panthers defense, Packers had a ton of success on the ground. 162 total yards rushing. Something, I don't know if they've had that many this season. Been a very bad year for running the football for the Packers. And I don't think it gets any better better on Sunday night as the Vikings very tough against the run fifth fewest rushing yards per attempt seventh fewest rushing yards in general now last week they stunk Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery had their way still Jared Goff threw 40 times in that game so I think they're going to have to still I think they're going to step up a little bit better on on this rushing attack from the Packers which hasn't been great all year long Force Jordan Love to get into some second and longs eight third and longs have to throw the ball and that's exactly where we wanted to be the last eight quarterbacks to face this Minnesota Vikings defense here are their passing attempts I'm not going to list every single one of them off a couple of guys to note, Aiden O'Connell, the only guy on this list that went under. He had 32 pass attempts. Technically, Derek Carr went under, but that's because he got injured. And Jameis Winston came in, and they combined for 43 passing attempts. So you've seen a lot of these guys, including Jordan Love himself, had to go over this line. And I just think they're going to have to throw the ball at least 34 times on Sunday evening. It's a big game, especially for these two teams. And I think at the end of the day, they're going to have to throw it. And while I don't necessarily know how much production you get out of the Minnesota Vikings offense, now starting Jaron Hall, the rookie QB, but I also don't think he's going to be you no know, consistently stringing together eight, nine minute drives, kind of milking that clock. I think if they're going to score, it's due to some big plays, maybe to Justin Jefferson or maybe on the ground. And I think that we're going to see the Vikings put up some points, force the or for, uh, yeah, force the Packers to have to throw the ball. And that's awesome for us. We want Jordan Love throwing the ball as much as he can. Give me his over 33 and a half pass attempts. I don't mind his passing yards, but I don't mind his passing completions, but his completions was 22 and a half. He has not had 23 completions in a game without at least throwing 34 times. So I really like this pass attempts line. Give me it at 33 and a half as my first. Technically, last pick of the day. We'll save the two-unit play for a little bit later on in this video. Now, my second pick is going to go to another attempts line. This one's a rush attempts line. His name's Jonathan Taylor. Like his over 16 and a half rushing attempts, minus 125 on draft kicks. Now, a couple books are at 17 and a half here. I saw one book, I think, points bet at 18 and a half. Personally, I'm not taking 18 and a half. There's just too many. I mean, these lines are too sharp this late in the season to have to take a full two attempts higher, although there is a chance that Jonathan Taylor could get 20 plus. I considered sprinkling on that on bet 365, but let's talk about this game for the Colts. A must win. They're at home. They're in a tie. They're eight and seven. They're in a tie with the Texans and Jaguars. The Jaguars own the tiebreaker over both of those teams, and they do play the Texans next week, so they obviously need to win this week and obviously win next week. Next week, if you had to pick one game to win, probably against the Texans, a little bit more important, but this is still a must win game at home taking on the Raiders and I think they're going to have to get back to running the football that's what the bread and butter of the Colts has been pretty much over the last few seasons and I just think they're going to have to do that last week versus Atlanta another stout defense the Colts lost that game 29 to 10 Gardner Minshew threw it 37 times a lot of pass attempts they trailed 20 to 7 terrible game script Taylor still 18 rush attempts get seven only seven in the second half now obviously terrible game script still came through in that one but what it saw from him in his first game back from injury he's still the lead back despite playing only 59 percent of snaps you still saw his backups Trey Sermon and Goodson those guys that were RB2 and 3 they saw a combined three rush attempts so out of the 21 rush attempts given to Colts running backs, 
Jonathan Taylor saw 18 of them, and it's probably going to stay the same once again in this Sunday game where they need to win. They cannot afford to lose these games, and they're back at home taking on the Raiders team that, while, yes, the Raiders have looked good the last two weeks since firing Josh McDaniels, still do think they're due a letdown. They're coming off of that big-time win against the, the Chiefs where they didn't complete a single pass from score in quarters two, three, and four. I don't necessarily think that works against the Colts here. The, the Raiders also have a team have allowed the seventh most rushing attempts in the NFL at 28 per game. And you've seen over the last nine weeks, the Colts want to get back to running the football. And they have done that. The running back rush attempts combined, whether it's Taylor, Zach Moss, Sermon, Goodson, all the guys combined, 21, 32. I'm not going to read out all, all of these, but they've attempted 20 plus rushing attempts in seven of their last nine games. Regardless of if they've been getting blown out or blown out teams, they're trying to get back to running the football. And I think if they run it 20 plus times, based on how they did it last week, even when Jonathan Taylor was coming back from injury, Jonathan Taylor still got a lion's share of the workload. So give me his over 16 and a half rushing attempts. Not the best matchup against the Raiders. They've been pretty good against the run. Still to think he gets 17 rush attempts. They just need to get the rock to him and they'll find different ways to get the ball to him. So he's one of their best players. Also, Michael Pittman Jr. is back. So probably makes their passing attack a little bit more formidable and they can convert probably more third downs and keep that clock going and keep Jonathan Taylor getting those carries on first and second down. Now my third play is going to go to a little bit of a ladder. Let's talk about a mini ladder for Mr. Chris Olave of the New Orleans Saints. And we're taking his over 66 and a half receiving yards, minus 115 on BetMGM for one unit. If I didn't mention the first two plays, we had Taylor, and obviously we had Love, both one unit play. We're also sprinkling a little bit, just a quarter of a unit, on Olave, 100 plus receiving yards at plus 280 on Bet365. Now, if you don't know what units are, that's just a standard bankroll management term. Let's say you put $10 on every single bet, or let's say $100 to make it a little bit easier. You put $100 on the first three picks I've already talked about, then you'd put an extra 25 bucks on Olave, 100 plus receiving yards. Now, why am I a big fan of Olave? Well, because I think he's a good matchup, arguably one of the best matchups in the NFL, and he's been really good. He's the number one guy on the Saints offense. And we've seen the last five games, Olave, 94, 114, 119, 20. 28 and 123 receiving yards. So he's been really good. Eight plus targets in eight of his last nine games too. So him and Derek Carr, even though it's their first year together, great connection really out of the gates. Then he kind of had that lull where Derek Carr was injured, but they kind of form, call, come back to full steam and he's cashed the full ladder in three of these last four or five games. And he's cashed his regular over in four of the last five. But like I said, this is an A plus matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Sunday. Olave, like I said, facing the Bucs on the road in Tampa. Tampa allowed the most passing yards and the most yards to wide receivers. Those kind of go hand in hand in the NFL. This is a team that cannot defend anyone. And what they're really good at stopping is the run. And that's something, you know, the Saints have not a lot of traction on a lot of great success this year. And really in the last like couple years is running the football. So you can't run against the Bucs. You're going to have to pass and they're going to pass it. Olave is probably that guy. Now, if you were to go back to the last time these two teams played, you'd say, Austin, Olave had one reception for four yards. What the heck happened? Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't really have a great explanation other than Derek Carr hurt his shoulder in the game prior, and he couldn't throw the ball more than like three yards down the field. So this, the Bucks just sat on every route. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, he had like 23 completions for like 120 yards. That goes to show he was pretty injured. But we've seen this Bucks team get absolutely used and abused by opposing number ones last six weeks. Look at these numbers. The Bucks have allowed 90-plus yards, not only Calvin Ridley, but Evan Ingram. They gave 97 to John TV and Wicks, I believe, is how you pronounce his name. You get Drake London get 172, 69 to Mingo, 107 to Pittman Jr., 89 to Kittle, and 156 to his teammate Ayuk. This team just cannot defend wide receivers that know how to catch the ball. And yeah, Olave has, has ruined us before and hit, has the ball hit his head. But I just think this is too good of a matchup for him. You saw last year, Olave, 80 and 65 yards versus the Bucks, But he only saw six uh, targets in one of those games. He had 65 yards. Michael Thomas played in a couple of those too. He's the number one guy for this team. This Tampa Bay Bucks secondary is a lot worse than it was last season. I just think Olave's in for another big day. Give me his over at 66 and a half receiving yards, which I would play up to about 71 and a half. But I really like him to get 100 plus. We'll put a little bit of a sprinkle on that. It's plus 280 on Bet365. I love that. Or roll with Chris Olave. Now, my fourth pick is going to be the one that is two units. Let's dive into it. Now, technically, I don't normally do two units on a single play. So we're actually splitting it up to two props for one guy. Let's talk about Bryce Young, how we're backpacking his passing props. Now, I am suggesting to put one unit on his over 168 and a half passing yards, which is minus 110 on Bet365. I'm also suggesting to put one unit on his over 27 and a half passing attempts, which is minus 120 on Bet365. In total, we'll have two units risked on Bryce Young to win like 1.7, give or take. Now, if you're like Austin, I only want to tail one or the other. Which one are you more confident on? 
kind of hard to pick, which is why I did one unit for each of them instead of putting two units on one or the other. But I really do like both of them. I like the pass attempts to 28 and a half. And I like the yards up to 175 and a half. I think Vandal was at like 181, which is just a ridiculous line. Don't take that. But since returning from injury in week four, obviously Bryce Young with number one overall pick, got injured, played the first two weeks, didn't look good, got injured, came back in week four. Bryce is over this pass attempts line, 27 and a half in 11 of 12 games. And he's also over the yards in nine of 12. They kind of go hand in hand. Obviously, the more he's passing it, the better chance he has of getting a lot of yards. But you look at a Bryce Young that obviously he has not a good, a good rookie season. The Panthers have not looked good. Everyone knows that. But Bryce is coming off the best game of his career. Best game of his rookie season. Not very hard to beat because he doesn't have a lot of good games to his game. But last week, 23 completions for 36 yard, or, uh, 36 attempts, 312 passing yards, and two touchdowns. He got DJ Chark involved. Adam Thielen was involved. Tommy Tremble was involved. And he was just looking really good. And while, yes, this is a very run-heavy Panthers offense, this is also Panthers team searching, is Bryce Young their future quarterback for the franchise? Obviously, you'd assume, yes, he was the number one overall pick. But you still have to evaluate everyone on your roster. And you obviously want to see if how good Bryce Young could be. Last week, coming off a really good game, I don't see them just saying, eh, fine, we're just going to end on that note, only run it the rest of the year. I don't mind Chuba Hubbard's rush attempts, but I just feel like this is a game that they just let Bryce Young cook a little bit. Let him go out there, get comfortable. They had him very comfortable last week against the bad Packers defense. Packers defense stinks. But this is also another really good matchup for him to throw the football against because it's a team in the in the Jaguars that won or down Trevor Lawrence. So I, we'll see how many points they put up. But they're really good at stopping the run, and they're going to force the Jaguar, the Panthers to throw the ball. I mean, the Jags allowed the fourth, fourth most passing yards per game at 257 and the fifth most passing attempts in the NFL at 37 per game this season. Only one team, one quarterback, did not pass for 170 yards versus Jacksonville. That was Will Levis. He threw the ball 17 times. And he threw for 158 yards, probably would have soared over this line. So I think at the end of the day, 12 of the 15 quarterbacks that have faced the Jags have thrown at least 28 times. So a great track record for the pass attempts, a great track record for the uh, passing yards. And we're thinking about the Jaguars, a team that is top 10 in rushing yards allowed per attempt. They're going to load the box and force Bryce Young to throw the ball. And I think that's the clear weakness that you can beat them. It's in Florida. It's in Jacksonville. It should have good weather. Shouldn't be any concern there. Panthers defense also has played pretty well. So I think they can get the ball back to Bryce Young too and get the, this Jaguars team that obviously is down Trevor Lawrence into some quick three and outs. Get the ball back to Bryce Young. Let him throw the ball. Let him eat a little bit. I think Bryce Young's in for a massive day. I don't necessarily know if he throws for 300 yards, but... I tell him he can't throw for 170 and he could throw it 30 times. I just think this is way too low of a line. I don't know what they're doing. If I fell right into the trap, whatever, but I just think this is too good of a matchup for Bryce Young. So he is our two unit play of the day, but we're sprinkling on one unit on his pass yards, one unit on his passing a complete or a, a, a attempts. I don't mind the completions, but I just think these are the two easier ones to get done. So Bryce Young, we're a big fan for you. Just hopefully let your let your team or your coach know that you want to throw the football. I certainly think they're going to do it. I like DJ Tark's yards too, but I didn't want to force three units on the Carolina Panthers. That sounds pretty dumb and then finally my fifth pick of the day will be a same game parlay i won't talk about this one a ton because it's a little bit of a high risk one and not really too risky but let's talk about it now before i even talk about the legs you will see this is only a half unit play so if your other bets we're talking about bryce young you put 100 on each of his this i would only recommend doing 50 and what are we talking about? A three-leg same game parlay involving the New York Giants. Who would have expected me to be betting on some New York Giants on Sunday? Hey, it's the final day of the year. We got to get a little bit crazy. But this is plus 210 on bet 365, then put a half a unit on to win a little bit over one unit. Now, we need Tyrod Taylor to throw for 200 plus passing yards, Darren Waller to have 25 plus receiving yards, and Jalen Hyatt to have two plus receptions. This is plus 210. Now, if you're on FanDuel or DraftKings, you can take Hyatt's receiving yards. I wish they have this receptions prop, which is one and a half. Yeah, you can take that. Although I really do like Hyatt's over in receptions more so than his yards. But I think they obviously go hand in hand. And sure, Tyrod Taylor's regular line is about 200. So I was going to put just Tyrod Taylor as a regular leg. But I think if Tyrod's going to get to 200 yards, probably a pretty good chance that he also has 25 to Darren Waller. I don't know how he could get to 200 without it. And he's also been a guy that has unlocked a little bit of Jalen Hyatt, a very good rookie wide receiver that hasn't got a lot of opportunity. But let's talk about Tyrod Taylor, who's obviously replacing Tommy Cutlets. So let's be honest, Tommy Cutlets stinks. He was not good. He did not want to stretch the field. Tyra Taylor coming in, and he started two games for the Giants, and he threw the ball for 200 and 279 passing yards, 200 plus what we need. Check. Waller, 43 and 98 receiving yards in those two games. Waller, 25 plus. Check. And then Jalen Hyatt, three and two receptions on four and five targets. Two or plus receptions check. So this SGP cashed in both of Tyrod Taylor starts. One was against the Bills, very tough defense. One was against the Commanders, very bad defense. This matchup, Pretty good one against the Rams. And while I think the main concern, honestly, here is obviously Ty Taylor needs 200 pass yards, which I think he gets, but it could come down to Jalen Hyatt getting two receptions. Now, if you look at Hyatt's game log, very similar to Jason Brownlee of the New York Jets, who we bet on Thursday night, 
you look at Hyatt, gone back to back games without a single reception. Now he did have three targets two weeks ago and then zero targets last week. He did run 23 routes. So he's not like he's out and not out there. He's out there running routes. Just Tommy DeVito did not look his way, did not want to throw the ball more than 10 yards past the line of scrimmage. Tyra Taylor, an NFL veteran, he's going to throw the ball a little bit further. And instead of sulking, they asked uh, they asked Jalen Hyatt, hey, you didn't get any targets. You kind of like kind of given his see what he could say about it. And instead of sulking and complaining like some typical wide receiver, like, yo, I'm not doing anything. Give me the ball. He actually was the complete opposite, handled with a lot of maturity, which I think will go a long way with his coaching staff because he didn't necessarily blame anyone. He just said, look, I got to be a little bit better. And I, he just felt like he didn't help the team a whole lot. But he ended his press conference kind of saying this, and I'll quote exactly what he said. He said, you can look at it two ways. You can be down and pout and just have a bad week, or you can come back this week, still prepare for the same and still be ready for your opportunities. In my opinion, he's going to get more opportunities. Jalen Hyatt and Tyra Taylor, they've been able to connect before. And this was when Jalen Hyatt wasn't playing a ton. Now he's playing a lot of snaps, playing over 50 to 60% of the snaps. I just think this is too good of a matchup. This is a really tough matchup for the Giants to run the football against the Rams, a team with Aaron Donald up the front. Teams don't really want to run into that. But in turn, the Rams allowed the 11th most passing yards in the NFL, 8th most yards to the tight end position. And you've looked at only one quarterback this season has not thrown for 200 passing yards against the Rams. So I think that Tyra Taylor gets us 200. 25 of it's definitely going to Waller. And then Jalen Hyatt, we need two receptions. I just think they find a way to get a guy that's handled all of his press conferences with maturity, a guy that just has not had the great connection with Tommy DeVito, but I just think they find ways to get the ball in his hands. So I'm only putting half a unit on it because it is the New York Giants and they are a dumb program and they are hard to bet on. But I think this is a really good bet to make this uh, Sunday. And I think they keep it close against the Rams. I don't necessarily think they went outright, but I think they could cover the plus six because I know everyone will be on the Rams in some way or another, whether it's in a teaser or it's on their money line, they will be on the Rams or just the regular spread. But those are my five favorite picks of the day. As always, I appreciate you guys as always for tuning in. Hopefully you guys have a great uh, end to your year, your end of your 2023. Be safe out there. And when our parlays video is live, I will link it on the screen. We cashed two parlays last week, one on Sunday, one on Monday. Logan and I should be back with our parlays edition video. But stay tuned for that. Let's go 5-0. and Let's cash all these picks. I know it's a little bit of a weirder card. I really do like it. I'll see you guys in the next one. It's Austin. Ringing in the U New Year 2023. We'll end it and go into 2024. I'll see you guys in the other videos before the year ends. See you then. Peace.